Welcome back to Spectrum Classes. This is my fourth video on the topic phase rule. In my previous three videos, I have discussed about the phase rule, number of phases, number of components, and here in this video, we are going to discuss about the degree of freedom in the phase rule. So, what is called degree of freedom? Degree of freedom of a system is defined as the number of independent variables such as temperature, pressure, and concentration or composition which must be specified in order to define the system complete. So what does this definition mean? We are going to discuss and elaborate this with the help of example one by one. So this degree of freedom in the phase rule can be written in the form of a formula like F is equal to C minus P plus 2. So here F is the degree of freedom. P is the number of components and P is the number of phases. About the number of phases, what are number of phases and how we can determine the number of phases. Similarly, what is called component and how we can determine the number of components for a given system. We have already discussed in my previous videos. And here we are going to discuss in detail about the degree of freedom. So here F is the degree of freedom and this formula is known as Gibbs phase rule formula. If suppose we are having F is equal to 0 means there is a 0 degree of freedom. So numerically we know this that this is a system of 0 degree of freedom. The terminology used to define the degree of freedom is non variant or invariant system. If degree of freedom is equal to 1, then the system is called as univariant system. If the degree of freedom is 2, then it is known as bivariant and similarly trivariant and so on. Numerically, we can understand these numbers that degree of freedom is 0, degree of freedom is 1 or 2 and so on. But how we are going to infer the meaning of these degree of freedom? that we are going to discuss here. Consider the system of water in which the liquid is in equilibrium with the gas vapor. Right? So here I have drawn this phase diagram for the water system and the dimensions are temperature on the x-axis and pressure is drawn on the y-axis. Here suppose the point O where all three phases exist together and this is also known as triple point that we are going to discuss later. And this equilibrium can be represented on this curve. Here this green represents the vapor phase of water. This blue represents the liquid phase of water and this light blue or sky blue color represents the solid phase of water. About the Details of this diagram we are going to discuss while we are discussing the water phase rule. I am not elaborating all such terms here. So suppose we are having this equilibrium and this equilibrium on this graph or this diagram can be represented like this. This line represents the equilibrium between water as liquid and water as gas. So here if we are writing the formula for degree of freedom, so F is equal to C minus P plus 2 as we have discussed in the previous slide. So here what is the number of component? So number of component is 1. Only water is needed to be expressed the whole system. So number of component is 1. How many phases are there? So here we are having two phases. One is liquid phase and the other one is gas phase. So on putting the values here, Number of components equal to 1, number of phases equal to 2 at this equilibrium, then the degree of freedom will be equal to 1. It means only one variable is required to define this system completely. And what will be that? Either temperature or pressure. For example, I am having a point on this equilibrium here, right? So 
if i just chosen one point or i need to define the temperature here here is the temperature and suppose it is 100 degree centigrade it's for this point then its pressure can be measured corresponding to this point and the pressure will be equal to 1 at pressure in this manner if we are at this curve we are having 1 degree of freedom for this equilibrium on this curve or for this kind of equilibrium which is represented by this line or this curve here is having one degree of freedom if i chose some other point at this point so i need to specify one of the parameters whether it is temperature or pressure or vice versa right so in this manner this system can be defined as having one degree of freedom right now coming to the next point here is the water as solid we are having this point so here how many phases are there here three phases are there solid liquid and gas at this point number of components are one only that is h2 right so on putting the values in this formula we are having number of components 1, number of phases 3 and plus 2, it will gives us 0. It means it is having 0 degree of freedom. So, how would you understand this? This point where all three phases exist together is known as triple point and this triple point has certain value of temperature which is equal to 0 0.0098 degree centigrade and Pressure is equal to 4.58 mm millimeters Hg. Right. If we say all three phases exist together, it means that this would be the temperature, this would be the pressure. No variable is there. It means this point for this water system is having zero degree of freedom. Now suppose if I draw one point here. So here how many phases are there? Only one phase, liquid phase. How many components? Component is one water. So one phase and one component, it means this system or this point is having two degree of freedom. For this phase of water or liquid phase, where only one component and one phase is there, the system is having two degree of freedom. Two degree of freedom means if we choose any of the point in this area, then we need to specify both temperature as well as pressure. Since at same temperature, we can have two different values of pressure. So, for every point, we need to specify temperature as well as pressure. So, it has two degree of freedom. And on the curves, it has one degree of freedom. And on the triple point, it is having zero degree of freedom. So, through formula we can understand, but how we can understand this concept through this figure, I have elaborated that over here. Now, we are solving some of the examples. The state of a pure gas can be specified by two variables, pressure and temperature or pressure and volume. Since the third can be calculated from the equation of state. So, PV is equal to RT. This means that a pure gas has two degree of freedom. Two degree of freedom means either we have to specify pressure and temperature or we need to specify pressure and volume. Out of one equation, we can evaluate only one unknown variable. So, either we need to specify pressure and volume or we need to specify pressure and temperature. Fixing these two, we can evaluate the third one. A mixture of pure gas can be specified by two variables. Now we are having some other examples. So water, it has three phases, number of components one. So depending on the equilibrium conditions or number of phases which are existing together, we can have zero, one and two degree of freedom as I have discussed in my previous slide. Similarly, for carbon dioxide, it is again exist in three different phases and one component system. So, it can have 0, 1 and 2 degree of freedoms as depend on the equilibriums existing over there. 
similarly for sulfur system we are having four phases and one component system in this system we cannot have all four phases exist together because in that case we will have negative degree of freedom say 1 minus 4 plus 2 so it will have minus 1 value so degree of freedom cannot be in negative terms it will always be in positive terms so therefore all four phases in one component system cannot exist together so it has depending on the phases exist in the equilibrium it has a degree of freedom 0 1 and 2 now coming to the mixture of gases suppose we are having mixture of gases hydrogen and argon are there these are known reacting gases so number of phases are 1 number of components are 2 so it has 3 degree of freedom it means pressure, temperature and concentration need to be specified for this kind of system. Now coming to the next example. So here we are having solution of NaCl. So it is having one phase. Number of components for this system are two that is H2O and NaCl. And if we apply this formula here. So, F is equal to C minus P plus 2, number of components are 2 minus 1, number of phases plus 2. So, we get 3. So, here for this system, we need to specify variables, temperature, pressure and concentration. If we talking about the saturated solution of NaCl, then it has two phases. And number of components are again 2 and if we apply the formula we get degree of freedom for this system is 2. It means we need to specify temperature and pressure for this system to express completely. Now coming to the next example. Here we are having say H2O solid and H2 as gas plus half O2 gas. Then we can express here the number of phases for this system are 2 and number of components for this system will be equal to 1. So on applying this formula, gives phase rule formula, we are getting the degree of freedom for this system is equal to 1. It means either temperature or pressure need to be specified for this system to express it completely. The next example is dissociation of calcium carbonate. So it dissociates as calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. It has three phases and two components. This I have discussed in my previous lecture. So on putting all these values in the Gibbs phase rule, F is equal to C minus P plus 2, we are getting degree of freedom for this system is equal to 1. So for this system, either T or P, T temperature or pressure need to be specified to express this complete. And similar kind of examples are also given here. These all are can be expressed either by specifying temperature or pressure for this system. So I hope you will find this video helpful and you understand the concept which I have discussed here. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks for watching.